Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The show starts in three. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's Friday, the 13th of September, 2024. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Canesport.com. Joined this morning by Zuby Charles and super freak Stephen Wagner as we discuss the news of the day. And uh, guys, I'm a little scared, you know, to embark on. I, I'm very superstitious about uh, Friday, the 13th. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's just one of those weird things, you know, I don't like 13th floors of high rise buildings and I just don't like Friday the 13th. I haven't found that anything good ever happens on Friday the 13th, but thankfully the Miami hurricanes don't play ball state till the 14th. Um, but, um, I will say that our show this morning is presented by Caneswear, which is, uh, your number one shop for all your Miami hurricanes merchandise needs. If you're on your way to hard rock tomorrow. Uh, stop by Canesware at 2655 South University Drive in Davie. Load up your car with all types of hurricane gear. They'll sell you tailgate tents, whatever you need to go party at the stadium. Um, you can get your Cam Ward jersey. Everybody wants a Cam Ward jersey this year. Uh, T-shirts, hats, polos, anything you can want with a hurricane logo on it, Canesware will hook you up. And uh, since they fed Lamar last night, uh, for the Lamar Thomas show, I will say that uh, you can also go to Las Spadas sub shop there and uh, get yourself the, the the best, thickest subs in South Florida and uh, just have the best tailgate you could possibly have as Miami uh, gets ready to take on Ball State. Um, so, guys, we're going to talk about the game a little bit later, but I want to start with recruiting because – there's just so much uh, of it going on, and it's getting overshadowed, obviously, by the games, by the excitement of the season and what everybody hopes um, this season will mean uh, for the Miami Hurricanes. But uh, these home games are also opportunities to host prospects, and um, there is constant recruiting going on. Uh, it looked earlier in the week like Elijah Griffin, the, the top defensive tackle in the 2025 class, a guy that everybody has earmarked to Georgia um, would be sneaking down here to South Florida for a visit this weekend. Um, now we, we are told that that will not happen. Uh, I mean, clearly he's going to Georgia. I mean, it would be the biggest upset in the world, Stephen, if Elijah Griffin did not go to Georgia and the, you know, Georgia hears that he's going to Miami and obviously they don't want him going to Miami and he's in Georgia and uh, clearly somebody talked Elijah Griffin out of visiting this weekend. Yeah. Um, it was definitely good news for hurricane fans. Whenever, you know, we initially reported that we expected Elijah to go ahead and make the trip down to Miami this weekend. Um, I still believe right now that Miami is still the biggest threat to Georgia uh, for Elijah Griffin, of course, like you said, and rightly so, I think everyone has kind of penciled him in uh, as probably going to Georgia. I haven't entered an RPM or anything, but right now, if you were to ask me my confidence, I'd say I'm probably about 80 to 85 percent certain that he will ultimately end up at Georgia. But Miami has been on him this entire year, and Miami has done enough to kind of you know, make things a little bit interesting, at least. Um, he took an official visit to Miami over the summer. Um, Miami staff has done a really good job with him. Joe Salovey and Mario Cristobal, I mean, you know, they have been on him like white on rice. Um, I mean, the, the Hurricanes have really been all over him and have done enough to make themselves what I think is a contender. Um, USC is also in the mix, but I don't consider USC to be nearly the threat that I think Miami is, that I think Miami is to Georgia. Um, he's supposed to take an official visit to Georgia uh, later this fall, um, but I don't think it would stun me if Elijah Griffin did end up going ahead and making a trip down to Miami at some point after all this fall. Um, it's just not going to be this weekend, but um, it, it, as long as there is, as long as there is breath 
in Mario Cristobal's lungs, he's going to keep working on Griffin. Um, because if there is even a whisper of belief, if there's even an ounce of belief that they can pull him from George's backyard, a kid of this, uh, a kid of this magnitude, a recruit of this magnitude who a lot of us really do believe is going to be that good. Uh, I mean, I think he is to this year's class what Justin Scott was to last year's class, just in terms of, um, you know, just how talented of, of a defensive lineman he is. Um, I do not see a way where Miami does not fight until the bitter, bitter end uh, to try to get Griffin out of Georgia. You know, let's remember with Justin Scott last year, it looked like he was going to Ohio State for a while. Miami hung in there and hung in there and was able to flip him and uh, get him here, which is all that matters. Signing day is not till December the 4th, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we're only sitting here on Friday the 13th of September. Um, a great day, I would say, to steal a recruit from somebody else. And... Um, you know, that brings me to the, the the news that Floyd Bucard, the uh, defensive tackle uh, out of Miami Central, uh, is going to visit this weekend. He is presently committed to Oklahoma, uh, believe it or not. And uh, he took an official visit this summer. Things seemed to cool between the two sides. He chose the Sooners. Um, but I think if Miami really, really, really hones in here and makes Floyd Bucard known that he is very much wanted in Coral Gables. I think that can pick up a lot of steam. Azubi, tell me, am I right on that front? I think you're right. But before I get into it, I just want to comment the, the Super Freak Steven uh, nickname. I think I like that one. That's a pretty funny one. But um, no, with Floyd Bucard, yeah, I think if Miami really, really turned up the heat on him, I think things could get very, very interesting. Like you mentioned, he did commit to Oklahoma this summer. It was kind of an up and down roller coaster with Floyd Bucard. You know, when he first got the offer, he was on Miami's campus, I think, two times in a week span, and then another time in the next week. He takes his official visit, cools down a little bit, then up and down and up, and then eventually commits to Oklahoma. But a prospect like that, I don't think Miami's going to completely ever shun and say, hey, you can't come to campus, or hey, we don't want to recruit you. It's a long recruiting process. A lot of things can happen. And like you mentioned, December 4th is a very, very long time away from this beautiful Friday the 13th. And seeing him on campus isn't a big surprise to me, but I'm excited to see what he has to say after it and see, you know, if the Hurricanes are really making a serious push of Floyd Bucard. All right, Stephen, just for some equal treatment there, you know, I'll let you know that Lamar has renamed Zuby IC. Okay. So you feel free anytime you want. I still call him a Zuby because I'm, you know, I'm used to, I'm used to a Zuby and Zuby. But he's also IC now, okay, which is huge. I mean, that's like a big, huge status jump for a young guy to, you know, have a legend like Lamar Thomas uh, give him a, a nickname like that. So, uh, you know, we can call him IC if, if we would like. Um, but I see other recruits on the list for this weekend. Um, I see uh, – Miami commits Bryce Fitzgerald, uh, Miami commit Amari Wallace, uh, Miami commit Herbert Scroggins, um, and Miami commit Ezekiel Marcelin, all from the 2025 class on the list. And, you know, not a big deal. They're already committed. But, um, Stephen, I think that, you know, you still feel good when your commitments are coming back game after game after game. There's other schools around the country that would love for them to come visit them. Um, they're honed in on Miami. Uh, they're making regular appearances at Hard Rock Stadium. That's a comforting feeling, especially with signing day creeping up so early now. Uh, they moved it up a couple weeks to December the 4th. It used to be the third week of December after originally being in February. Um, now it's December the 4th. So you really got to have your, your recruiting class secure during this regular season, uh, I think it's nothing but a positive that these guys are making their way through the games, even one as nondescript as Ball State. Yeah, especially Bryce Fitzgerald. I mean, the other guys, I feel pretty good about where things sit um, with those guys. I don't think Ezekiel Marcelin's going anywhere. Um, I don't think Amari Wallace is going anywhere. I'd be pretty surprised if Herbert Scroggins uh, goes anywhere. But Bryce Fitzgerald, you know, he was really clear whenever he committed, and he said even before he committed, um, and this was when this was back when uh, we still thought that Florida could absolutely land Bryce Fitzgerald. Uh, when we were starting to hear a lot of buzz around Florida State potentially landing Bryce Fitzgerald and LSU um, being a serious, serious factor, 
uh, or being a serious, serious player. He said he wasn't going to shut down his recruitment. He did want to keep things open. Um, he did want to continue going on other visits, communicating with these other schools. Um, and right now, Florida State and LSU, they're still pushing for him. And, you know, we can kind of read between the lines and, you know, conclude that if they're pushing this hard for him, if they're still working on him, that means they still think that they have a chance. That means that those staffs still feel like they have a chance to go ahead and land him. Um Bryce Fitzgerald, you know, he he was really enamored by the success uh, that Mike Norvell had his uh, had the last two years at Florida State. Obviously, you know, things are going a little bit different this year, um, and uh, you know it, that I I think that's kind of a messy situation up there in Tallahassee that a lot of fans aren't super fond of. But um, before the season started, um, you know, when LS or when Florida State was on that you know massive regular season win streak. Um, you know, Fitzgerald did like what he what he thought that Norvell had built up there. Um, he also has a cousin who goes to school at LSU, um, not as an athlete, but just as an everyday student uh, at LSU. And he rants and raves about how awesome the experience is and how much he likes the experience. But um, I really do think that one of the things that's kind of helped Miami uh, keep Fitzgerald locked in uh, is, well, one, the relationships, but two, also the proximity to home. Um, I do think that at the end of the day, this is a kid who would prefer to stay in state uh, if he can. And I really do believe that this year Miami just needed to show him, hey, man, we're ready to win. We're not going to waste your talent. We are ready to, to you know, restore Miami to, you know, it, it, it's previous greatness you know where we are not going to be the same Miami that on occasion has been able to still get elite South Florida talent for the last 20 years but kind of you know wasted it or didn't really do much with it um you know that that this Miami team is here to win they're here to stay um and that you can accomplish every single one of your goals at a school like Miami um, and I think that as long as Miami stays on course uh, this season, you know, as long as, um, you know, the, the ship isn't sinking, as long as, you know, Cam Ward's playing great, that offensive line looks awesome, and Miami's playing at the level that I think a lot of us expect it to play at, um, I really do think that Bryce is ultimately going to end up a hurricane. Um, but obviously, I mean, you know, We've seen the recruiting success that a school like LSU has had. Um, the Tigers aren't anyone to, to, to kind of thumb your nose at. Um, Colorado, Deion Sanders um, is uh, trying to make a little bit of a push too. And, you know, I had a chance to talk with Bryce a few days ago. Um, and he said he didn't even remember what the conversation was about. He just said, he just said in, in his head, he kept on thinking, oh man, I'm talking to Dion right now. Um, so that's at least a phone call that he's going to pick up. Um, but as long as Miami stays on track, I do think they'll still be the team to beat for Fitzgerald. Hey, by the way, you see that thermostat over your left shoulder? I like working in hoodies. I'm comfortable what? in hoodies. Like, I like it. You know, I like it, 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 cozy. It, it does have an. It, it has an up button. You know. I I, I, I mean, like my I like my hoodie. It's it's warm. It's soft. It's cozy. Yeah, but it's but it's five in the morning, Stephen. It, it's it's if, like if, it's if, like having if, a big blanket. It's like having a, a big hoodie, blanket around you. I love, I love the feeling of working in a hoodie. At five in the morning in Florida. That means all you gotta do is hit that up button on that thermostat over there, and it'll save you some money on your electric bill too. But uh, anyway, um, I see. I also see. Um, I got to stop doing that. Let me let me rewind. Let, let me rewind that. That's terrible. Azubi, I, I thought it was Azubi. funny. I liked it. The, Azubi, the, the I, <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, some a couple stud names on the 2026 list of visitors this weekend. Uh, none bigger than athlete Derek Cooper. He's he's uh, one of the top. Uh, prospects in the 2026 class. Miami is making a massive push there. Th th nobody really knows what position Derek Cooper is going to play in college. He could be a running back. He could be a safety. He could be a linebacker. He he could be the 2026 version, honestly, of Elijah Lofton, who you probably could put at any of those positions. <laughs> you could put him anywhere on the field and he's going to stand out and be a stud. Um, Azubi, uh, Derek Cooper, clearly has legitimate interest in Miami. Yeah, yeah. The local prospect, Derek Cooper, like you mentioned, you can put that kid anywhere on the field. You can be a D1 water boy if you wanted to. He just makes things happen on the field. Um, 
very, very high interest in Miami. This is going to be a second weekend in a row at Hard Rock Stadium when he's down there tomorrow. Super excited uh, to see what he has to say again about the Hurricanes. I asked him, hey, you know, what are your thoughts about the program? He said, hey, this is my first time seeing Miami actually good. You know, I grew up hearing all these, you know, amazing stories and fairy tales about how good Miami was. But now actually seeing it is pretty cool. He also mentioned that he loves what he saw from, you know, uh, Damian Martinez and Mark Fletcher, two running backs that are really kind of paving the way for that Hurricanes offense and doing their thing down there. He thinks Miami is a national championship contender, and he, he looks forward to building that relationship with them every single time he visits, and he's been there quite a few times, a few times in the summer for back-to-back -back visits and now back-to-back -back visits at Hard Rock Stadium. So I think Miami's right in the mix with Derek Cooper. I know he committed to Georgia for, I think, about 24 hours, you know, late this summer, but things kind of didn't work out how they planned, so he's back on the market. I think Miami may be the team to beat in his recruitment right now. All right, you guys out there know how Miami likes to hone in on their offensive line recruits early. And, um, you know, Alex Mirabal does as good a job as anybody in the country in evaluating that position. And uh, there's a kid by it. I hope I'm pronouncing this name right. If I'm not, I apologize. But uh, Kenye Pepe. I hope I, I hope Kenai. 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 Okay. Kenai. Kenai. That's, how, that's how you say it. Be, because, because the first time that I called him, I said, is this, is this Kenny? And he goes, it's Kenai. <laughs> All right. Well, Kenai Pepe uh, will be uh, uh, at Hard Rock this weekend as well. He's one of the top offensive tackle prospects in that 2026 class. Uh, we'll be looking out for him. I don't think we'll be able to miss him when he arrives. Uh, and then there's a couple other 2026 guys. You can, you'll can you read about them in the, in the story that's on the website today. Um, but the point is that there, there is still a lot of recruiting going on behind the scenes. It's not obviously as high profile as it is during the off season months when, you know, quite honestly, we are pounding recruiting coverage and, you know, bombarding you with every visit and every phone call and uh, every single development going on in recruiting. And there's no games that are distracting from that. Uh, but, you know, there is still a lot of recruiting going on uh, in the background. And uh, it all inspired uh, Stephen to take a shot, as we do periodically, in predicting the 2025 mock class. Uh, I won't go through every single pick he made. You guys can read the story on the website. But, um, Stephen, assuming everything you put there is correct, uh, which I'm sure it is, uh, your thoughts on how the high school portion of this 2025 class is coming together. And I say high school because signing day is December the 4th. And what's going to happen after that is anybody that's still screwing around and hasn't signed yet is probably going to get left uh, by the, by the wayside, quite frankly, Miami will at that point turn its attention to the transfer portal. But Steven, your thoughts on this 2025 recruiting class and how it's coming together. Yeah, this recruiting class is coming together very well. I think that if Miami ends up landing the players who I predicted they will land in this mock class, they'll absolutely end up with a top 10 class. Um, top five, I'm really not certain. I, I think they'll probably end up somewhere uh, around the uh, around the, the seven or eight range, I, I think. And uh, again, keep in mind that also depends um, what some of the other schools are able to land. Um, as far as uh, as far as top prospects, who's able to flip who, and all that good stuff. Um, but I did go ahead and make a few bold predictions um, that I think Miami is going to be able to flip a handful of really top tier elite targets. I'm talking like top 100 players um, that right now are committed to other major schools that Miami has very well documented recruiting clashes with. That I think Miami is going to be able to go ahead and pull away. Um, from those schools after all. Um, there's a few guys who I left off too, some guys that have been high on, you know, some guys that have been saying, man, you know, I really think Miami's going to have a chance uh, to go ahead and flip, um, you know, this really big name kid from a major powerhouse. Um, there were some guys that I left off just because, man, I, I mean, you know, as, as, as much as I wanted to include them, I just didn't feel like I had enough confidence to say, yeah, I do think this kid's going to end up a hurricane after all, even though I do think Miami's going to make it very, very difficult. Um, and, you know, they could be fighting to, and they could be fighting for the, with this kid for the, or they could be fighting for this kid until the end. Um, I think when it's all said and told, you know, we'll probably see Miami a little bit North of 25 recruits uh, in this class. I think that, I think that's, that's, 
probably about uh, the final number of signees that they're going to end up with. Um, I really do think uh, that for the for the most part, Miami's commits are pretty solid. You know, especially the offensive line group. I feel really good um, about where things sit with this offensive line group in this class, and just kind of you know how solid those guys are with the Hurricanes. Um, you know, then there's obviously some other positions that we feel really good about. You know, tight end feel great about that room. Uh, quarterback. Luke Nichols not going anywhere. Um, you know, the University of Miami would have to be wiped from the face of the planet for this kid to not sign with the Hurricanes. Um, you know, for, from from time from time to time, uh, his dad will send me a little photo of Luke, literally a photo of Luke just doing something random, and he'll say, "Hurricane Luke is coming. It's a Category Five. Uh, that's how much of a hurricane this kid is. That's how much he believes in Shannon Dawson. That's how good he feels about him." Um, but yeah, all in all, I, I, I do think that this is going to end up being a really good class. And I do think that, you know, the way that I'm viewing things right now, I do think Miami will ultimately end up with a class that finishes back inside the top 10, uh, inside the top five. I'm kind of iffy on, uh, I think it, that part is going to depend, um, just who Miami is able to flip. Um, and then also they'll probably need a little bit of help from some of those classes that are in the top five. Um, that have a ton of five-star commits. You know, you think of you know a, a, a Georgia, you think of an Oregon, you think of an LSU, an Ohio State, and Alabama. One of these programs that has multiple top five targets locked up. Um, I think they'll probably need a little bit of help there if they're going to try to crack the top five again. All right. So Stevens mock recruiting class is on the website today. Make sure you check that out. Uh, and another recruiting story that we have. Um, is about the Kinsler brothers. Uh, you know, Tommy Kinsler is a, is a guard on Miami's offensive line now. We well, have a younger brother, Jermaine, who's a defensive lineman, and um, they may have spent their their youth probably beating up on each other in the backyard, perfecting their football skills. Um, would have loved to have a front row seat for that. Uh, but uh, now uh, Jermaine is a Miami recruit uh, in this 2026 class coming up, and um, – We've got an update on him and, and where he stands with Miami. And, um, you know, Steven, this is your story, so I'll ask you. I mean, is it a foregone conclusion that um, Jermaine ends up a Miami Hurricane? Definitely not. Um, I think right now it's still way, 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 way too early to tell. There are law schools that are pushing really hard for him because he's much more of a national recruit than his brother was. Um, I don't think there's any denying that. Uh, Jermaine's a four-star. Tommy was a, you know, Tommy was a three-star that, you know, Miami staff very clearly liked quite a bit. Um, but uh, Jermaine, he's not in Miami's backyard either. He's actually playing football in New Jersey um, right now. Um, and yes, his relationship with his brother definitely does play a little bit of a factor. Um, but uh, I playing together at the college level is not something that you know they're necessarily dead set on doing. Um, Jermaine has said before that his brother has been really, really adamant that if there's a school that he just likes more, um, he should go there. He he should check it out um, because playing together is not you know a foregone conclusion or you know a massive goal. Um, that either of them have. Um, although Jermaine does take his brother's opinion of Miami, um, you know, into serious consideration. He weighs that quite a bit uh, whenever Tommy tells him he likes the experience, that he's happy in Miami, um, that he's glad he came here. And he has someone who can kind of, you know, help walk him through the recruiting process. Um, you know, someone who's been there before, someone who's walked through all of this stuff. Um, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion by any means, uh, but I would expect him to, to see him back on campus at some point this fall. All right. Uh, let me give you guys a little break in the action here. And uh, let's hear from our friends at Canesware. Welcome, Welcome to, to Canesware. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fans shop. 
And uh, Canes World, like I said earlier in the show, really does have the, the the largest and greatest selection of Miami Hurricanes gear that you can find anywhere in town. If you live in South Florida, go visit their store, 2655 South University Drive in Davie. It's about 15 minutes north of Hard Rock Stadium. You can go load up, like I said, on all your tailgate stuff. They have T-shirts, jerseys, polos, hoodies, hats, flags, decals magnets anything you could possibly want they have at caneswear if you need some tailgate equipment for uh for, for the ball state game uh tailgate tomorrow you could stop at caneswear they'll hook you up with all of that they even have gear for the dolphins panthers and inter miami soccer and they'll take care of men women kids babies even pets they will dress your dog up like a cane. Um, so Cane Tour is more than a store. It is an absolute experience at 2655 South University Drive in Davie. Um, and Cane's Wear is always open, as you know, at caneswear.com. So if you can't get to the store, go to caneswear.com, and uh, you can shop everything in the store right there. So 2655 South University Drive in Davie or caneswear.com for all your Miami Hurricanes merchandise needs. And um, I guess that takes us to the focal point of the week, guys, which is tomorrow's game uh, against Ball State. Uh, we had the chance to get a, a little extra uh, stuff from Mario Cristobal this week uh, by way of the uh, Mario Cristobal show. And uh, he made it very clear that uh, it's a huge priority right now. I mean, they're not taking anything for granted. Um, they are... They are treating this like it's the Florida State game. And we're going to see the starters out there probably too long again, unless it goes really, really well in the first half. Uh, because, you know, we've talked about this endlessly in all of our shows this week. Uh, the importance of style points when you have a quarterback trying to win the Heisman and you have a football team trying to position itself for the college football playoff. Um, but he made it very clear that he wants to see the program do a better job of getting the other part of the roster ready to play right now. Um, he, you know, it's a transient business. He says you have to get guys ready to play. There's injuries. The seasons are longer and not everybody sticks around forever because of the transfer portal. So a uh, huge focal point to get that, you know, second half of the roster rocking and rolling and improving uh, Azubi to do that. He's got to get him in the game. And he might have to get him in the game a little earlier than he did against FAMU. Um, a lot of debate about that. But, uh, you know, a lot of guys got reps in that game. But, I, you know, I'd like to see Chris Johnson for more than three reps. Uh, you know, for example, uh, you know, other guys, Ray Ray Joseph, would like to see him get going. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Um, some of the young linebackers, I mean, Darius Hayes was in there for a short time. He flashed that great interception. Uh, so uh, hopefully they can take care of business early against Ball State and get a little bit more of extended playing time for some of these second half of the roster players. Yeah, so I'm going I'm to break this down to you. My ideal game on Saturday, Miami goes up big in that first half. You let Cam and those starters get two drives in the second half, and then from half the third quarter to end of the game, you let those young guys get their time, those second strings, those third string guys really shining kind of do their thing against, you know, a, a decent FBS team in Ball State that, you know, was 1-0 coming off their win last week. I think, yes, uh, when we spoke with Lamar Thomas on Wednesday, I think what he said was best. He said, hey, the reason that we were so good, you know, back during my national championship times was the third and four stringers were pushing those one and two guys to say, hey, if I mess, if I slip up, those third and four stringers come in and take my job. And I think Miami is really kind of building that type of culture where, hey, every position group has battles throughout that kind of, push those players to be better and better and better each week, knowing, hey, I got a guy chomping at the bits to take my job, to take my snap, so I have to keep playing at that very intense high level. And I think in the running back group, that's kind of the perfect example of it. Obviously, you have your two workhorses, Damian Martinez and Mark Fletcher, but then you have a guy like Chris Johnson. Yeah, we don't we want to see him play more than three plays, but no three plays, he caught two passes and a touchdown. So, hey, Coach Dawson said, we're going to reward him for that. Another guy, Jordan Lyle, true freshman out of South Florida, doing his thing, scoring his first touchdown in the game. So just having those position groups that are battling, 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 just having that depth pieces and getting them that invaluable play time. You know, obviously practicing, you know, could do the world for you. But, hey, that on-the-job training, that's priceless, and they got some of that. And I'm looking forward to seeing those guys get that type of training against Ball State if Miami can handle business in that first half in those first two drives in the third quarter. 
Well, Ball State, uh, they eked out a season-opening win last weekend against a pretty bad Missouri State team. It was a 42-34 score. This is a team that was 4-8 and eight a year ago. Should not be able to mount a very big challenge to the Miami Hurricanes. We're not going to you know, try to you know, sell you a bunch of nonsense here. Um, but one place where they are decent um, is on the offensive line. They, they have a big offensive line and i think mario has seized on that o-line to get the attention of the defense um you know they have a, they have a decent tight end or two you know maybe a wide receiver uh, a lot of starters back on offense but listen i mean miami should be able to handle this team really really well uh you know um their coach uh coach new mike new uh, he put a happy face on this trip. He, he, he talked about how exciting uh, the Cardinals are to come to South Florida, but he also talked about the respect that he has uh, for Miami's team. And, um, you know, I think that Ball State would be very happy to just come in here and be somewhat competitive, uh, keep it from being a, a blowout and um, – collect their money and go home and move on with their season. You know, Miami, Ohio played the Canes last year and got handled pretty easily by the Hurricanes and and went on to a decent season. You know, these MAC teams are not terrible. I would love to see the MAC teams be the baseline of scheduling uh, for the Miami Hurricanes. I I, can't, I just uh, enough of the fam use and the but but especially if they're not bringing their band. I mean, fam you coming down without their band last week was an absolutely worthless exercise in my opinion. Um, I would say let's stop scheduling fam you and Bethune. Let's make these MAC teams Miami Ohio uh, Ball State. Let's make that the baseline uh, for the schedule. I just think the Hurricanes get a little bit more out of the game to have a team that's somewhat competitive. Um, and they don't get a whole heck of a lot out of playing Bethune and, and, and FAMU. So just my two cents on that. Not that anybody's going to listen to me, um, but, man, I hope I see the day um, when the really bad pay games are gone from the college football landscape. Uh, one other story we have today is with Xavier Restrepo. Um, man, he, he is something else. I mean, he leads the team with 11 catches for 216 yards. We spent all last year talking about his connection with Tyler Van Dyke and how TBD seemed to be throwing every pass to Restrepo. Now Cam Ward's feeding Restrepo a lot. And there's a common theme in there, and that's that Restrepo's maybe the hardest working guy on the team. Uh, so that that certainly has a lot to do with it. And he also just produces, man. I mean, he's so consistent every single day. You don't ever have to worry about Restrepo showing up. He catches the football. He runs the right routes. Um, just a kid that just, you know, is just a model, model guy to have on your team. Um, and uh, he's off to another great start this season. We have a story with him, and you can check that out on the website uh, today. Um, if you are on YouTube and you like this show, even without Matt Shodell, and you like this channel, please, please, please hit your subscribe and like buttons. It helps us with the algorithms at YouTube and growing our audience. And, um, you know, we have grown our audience quite a bit on this show. And, we, you know, I'm going to take this moment to thank all of you that wake up with us every single day. Um, and I really love, like, getting the chance to meet a lot of you guys, especially when we're out on the road. And, um, you know, I appreciate the fact that you guys watch the show uh, and like it as much as you do. And we do our best to deliver for you guys uh, every single time we do it. If you are not yet a subscriber to canesport.com, uh, your subscriptions – quite frankly, allow us to do what we do every single day. They allow Stephen Wagner to pay for the electric bill because he won't turn up his thermostat. Uh, he thinks the answer is you just put on a sweatshirt or sleep in it, whatever, you know, sleep in a sweatshirt, whatever. Um, no, that drives up his electric bill, okay? Fuel prices have never been higher. I know my electric bill in my house was the highest last month that it has ever been in the existence of my home. Uh, absolutely insane what is going on with, with energy prices. And, um, you know, Stephen needs the extra cash to pay his electric bill because he doesn't know how to turn down his thermostat. So anyway, your subscriptions do allow us to do what we do every single day. So get on over to canesport.com. Um, hit, you know, go in there and subscribe, become part of our great fan community. 
Uh, we're on the message boards every day interacting with you. We have a great group of fans. Uh, you will not be sorry if you come join our canesport.com uh, community and, and family. And with that, we're off uh, tomorrow to Hard Rock Stadium uh, for Chapter 3 of this season. The Canes against Ball State. Hope to see many of you there. And don't forget, go to Canes Wear and load up on gear before the game. For Azubi Charles and Stephen Wagner, I'm Gary Furman. Thanks again for waking up with us. We'll see you next time, everybody.